some time off, isn't that right? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise God. Well, I pray that God is blessing you and your family. Hey, Jackie and I, we want to get to see you guys when we come up to Pennsylvania in September, okay? So we might try to ride up to where you are. Well, Dr. Patrick Carter, my door is always open. You're more than welcome to stop in. You and, you and Miss Jackie are more than welcome. Okay, and I'll give you more information about when we're coming later on, okay? You got it, Dr. Patrick Carter. Thank you. God bless you. Praise God. Tammy Nichols, God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're praying your prayer request that you put on the, on the, on our Facebook, Tammy. Praise God. We're believing God. He's going to do it. We believe that God's going to do that. God bless you, Tammy. God bless you. Praise God. Sylvia, God bless you. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hey, let's give a shout out to Sylvia Curtis. Sylvia, praise God. We saw your prayer request on Facebook today, and I believe today God's going to heal your body in the name of Jesus. I believe God's going to reach out right now and touch your body, Sylvia. So you just stay tuned to this Back to Basics Online Church, hallelujah, where the Holy Ghost is in charge. Hallelujah. hallelujah. We serve you. Come on in, Sylvia. Say hello to us. Uh, hi, and God bless. I'm so glad to be able to join the service today. Looking forward to it, to a Holy Spirit-filled hour. We pray and praise. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Give my greetings to Brother Vernon, and uh, we love Amen. you, and we thank God. Praise God. Praise God. Glory Amen. to God. Love okay, okay. It looks like <clears throat> many people are tuned in, and I want to give a shout-out to all the people all over the world who are watching this uh, ministry via Facebook Live. I want to welcome all those who will be watching the video on YouTube, my YouTube channel, Leroy Carter. Go to YouTube, Leroy Carter, and you'll have uh, all of our archive videos and the current ones and this one. Praise God. I thank God for this series he's giving us. This series, and for the last four weeks, I've been preaching on the message, the subject, why every believer ought to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Every believer ought to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I am excited. God told me to preach it. He said, now you preach it and I'll do the work. So I'm just, that's a partnership. Tammy Nichols, that's a partnership. God says, you preach it, you teach the people, and he will do the work. And that's what he wants us to do. He wants us to believe him so much that as we put that word out there and, and no matter what the situation looks like, no matter what your body's telling you, Sylvia Curtis, no matter what's going on, you put that word out there and you watch what God will do. See, it's the work of the Holy Spirit. It's the office of the Holy Spirit. He's God. He was here in the beginning. He created the world. He created us. And he knows what we need. And he knows what every situation needs. And all he requires of us is to be faith to, faithful to him and trust him and put his word out there. And, and his word will not return until him void. Hallelujah. I thank God. The Holy Ghost knows that once the word gets out there, the word works. And he's the one gonna, who's going to make the word work. So if you're tuned in today, ladies and gentlemen, whether you're in the United States of America or Canada or Russia or North Korea or Israel or a nation in Africa or Australia or a nation in South America, anywhere in the world, you can be saved today. That if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the Back to Basics Ministries online church. Thank God for the online church. Thank God for the brick and mortar church. Thank God for the church. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the church of the living God. God is calling people in these last days to worship him. Jesus Christ died on the cross that we all may have eternal life. And 
everyone <clears throat> who receives Jesus as Savior becomes a part of the church. Praise God. There's no schism in his church. There are no denominations in the true church of God. The true church of God consists of believers who've been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ and have received him. Yeah. And so I'm going to share something, ladies and gentlemen, because what people think is the church is not often the church. The church, I mean, the people's ideas of the church, we've got all kinds of ideas. I wrote a book called A New Paradigm for the Church. A New Paradigm for the Church. And if you email me at LeroyCarter69 uh, at Yahoo.com, I will send you a copy of this church. I'm not asking for anything for it. I'll send it. I'll send it until we exhaust our copies. I'll send you a copy. We'll accept your donation, but actually I want to send you a free copy because this book, A New Paradigm for the Church, talks about church number one and church number two. Let me just give you a little taste of this. Let's pray first. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this new day. This is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad, Lord, that you have people online today that we're coming together as the church to worship you and give you praise and glory and honor. So we bless you and we praise you and we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. We ask that you guide us today. Touch each one, Lord. Meet every need. We pray for souls to be saved and added to the kingdom of God. We thank you, Father, for the blessing of the online church. And we pray for the church all over the world, whether it's an online uh, uh, meeting or a brick and mortar meeting that where two or more are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst of them. Amen. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And we give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen, Just a little excerpt from the book I wrote called uh, entitled, um, a new paradigm for the church. The word paradigm means a new model, a new way of thinking, a new model, a new way of thinking, a new paradigm for the church. And I published this last year. And in this, uh, we say, in fact, there are two churches in existence today. Church number one is the church that Jesus prophesied at Caesarea Philippi. This church is small in number, as compared to church number two. Church number one, which is the real church, is made up of blood-washed, very serious people who truly believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, who died on the cross for the sins of all mankind, who rose from the dead and is coming back again soon. Members of church number one, the real church, believe the Bible to be the true word of God, and they try with all their heart to follow the scriptures and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Members of church number one believe in the person of the Holy Spirit, who is the third person of the Trinity, and they honor and respect the Holy Spirit as God living inside the heart of every believer. Members of church number one, the real church, believe in studying the word of God, aka the Bible, and living by what the word says. Along with the entire Bible, they also believe in the importance of prayer as a communicative means of hearing from God. And they believe in talking to him for guidance, wisdom, knowledge, direction, and correction. That's just a little description of church number one, the church that we all belong to. <clears throat> now, listen to this, church number two. And we're talking about two churches in America and two churches in the nation. Church number two, on the other hand, is a far and sad cry from what Jesus envisioned and proclaimed at Caesarea Philippi. Church number two, also called the church, most people think this is the church, is man-made and man-operated. It is deceptive and full of people with itching ears who have been deceived by selfish leaders and Satan-controlled and manipulated characters. Church number two, or the church as most people know it and identify it as their church or my church, it's a personality 
or people-centered aberration of what Jesus called the real church to be. It is personality-led and controlled and often does not operate un under the guidance of the whole Bible or the scriptures or the Holy Ghost. They don't even accept the Holy Ghost in church number two. What we have in America today and throughout much of the world is two churches. Both churches meet generally at the same time. In fact, both churches are meeting right now at 11 o'clock Eastern time a.m. And they compete. They compete for the hearts, minds, souls, and attention of the people. Church number one is the real church. This church has a much smaller population than church number two. This church is having great difficulty growing and developing in the United States because most Americans have long ago, listen to this, most Americans have long ago kicked Jesus Christ out of his own church. The church that he established and they have created their own form of religion, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> in church number two, they have created their own form of religion. This church does not demand prayer, does not demand Bible study. It does not demand serious worship and praise of the Lord. And it does not require holy and righteous living. Church number two does not require holy and righteous living. That's why so many people are, 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 are breaking their necks to get there today. They're trying to get there just to show up, to let people know they're there. But that church does not demand holy living. It does not require holy and righteous living. In this church, people can say whatever comes to their minds and they can do whatever they feel like doing. Their only requirement, listen to this, ladies and gentlemen, their only requirement is to show up regularly and bring their money with them. I've just read to you a, a segment <clears throat> from my book, A New Paradigm <clears throat> for the Church. And I'd like to send you a free copy of this. Uh, just send me an email, Leroy Carter69 <clears throat> at yahoo.com, and I'll be sure to get you a copy. I don't have many copies left, but as many as I have left, I will send you a free copy of A New Paradigm for the Church in which we contrast church number one and church number two. And we will we look at this in this book and we see why the church is so messed up, not only in America, but in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the church in America is often duplicated in other nations. When I go overseas, what I see in most of those churches are clones of what American churches are doing. And if the American church that they're modeling is messed up, then that church is messed up. So get a copy of a new paradigm for the church and look at the solution to the confusion that's in the church. This book will bless you. It's free. You contact me, uh, send me an email or text me. Uh, uh, Facebook family, you can hit me up on Facebook and uh, make sure I get your address and I'll send you a copy uh, and I'll pay even pay for the shipping and handling because I want you to get this book and read it and praise God. We want to give a shout out to our friend. We've got our friend David Carter in from Dubai. We want to take a little break right now and ask David to come on and speak to us all the way from the country of Dubai. David, come on in and say hello to us. Hello, Pastor Carter. Bless you, bless you. Hello, Pastor Carter and everybody who's on the line. Um, God bless everyone. Hi, I'm, I'm Hello, I'm glad to just be a part of um, church today. <laughs> I'm glad I actually uh, made it home and in time to be able to um, um, catch you, um, sir. So I'm, I'm just glad to be a part of it this day, sir. Praise God. Praise God. We love you, David. You and your wife and family. And you're, you're a long way from Texas. But we pray yes, for a you long way, we sir. hold you up in our prayers. Praise God. Yeah. God bless yeah, you. Yeah. Do you Thank have you any so prayer much, requests, David? Um, well, good thing to just pray for my, just pray for us, just pray for me and my wife, my, my daughter, while we are here in Dubai, you know, just, just continue to pray for us, you know. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, yes. yes. You know, it took great courage and it's a great venture for you and your family to move from Texas all the way across the ocean 
and the heir yes. to Dubai. So, Father, in the name yes. of Jesus, we lift up Thank David you, Carter and his precious wife and daughter. Thank you, and Jesus. Ask you to cover them with the blood of Jesus. Keep them, Lord. You, Meet Father, every God. need, Lord. Help them to be a witness you, for Jesus, you man. in the nation. <clears throat> of Dubai, and we praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, yes, you bless, bless them and meet every need they have, and we thank you, Father, okay. in the thank mighty Jesus, name of man. Jesus. Name of Amen. Jesus. God bless you. Amen. God bless Amen. you. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. Praise God. Okay. God Amen. told me that this um, online church will be a worldwide ministry, and ladies and gentlemen, we're touching nations. We're touching people in many nations with the gospel, and we're doing this because we want to be obedient to the Lord and we love the Lord God. We love the Lord God. Hallelujah. And, and I just want to encourage you. I'm looking at a lot of people in the chat window, and I see many whom God has touched. God has a plan for you. I'm looking at some of my friends. Uh, one is a trucker. He goes up and down the coast in an 18-wheeler. God's got a mighty ministry for you, Ryan. Praise God. Amen. I'm looking at so many others. Uh, praise God. I'm looking at Sylvia Curtis in Indiana, Tammy Nichols in Ohio, Christy Carpenter, and so many others. Praise God. My son comes on and many, many others. God's got the plan. And when God speaks to you, don't be afraid, ladies and gentlemen. When God says, this is what I want you to do. He might, may not put you in a pulpit uh, with 5,000 people in the audience. He may not put you uh, uh in, 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 in leadership uh, in a great cathedral, but whatever God says do. Ladies and gentlemen, God may say, go on the internet and, 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 and get a website and get a phone number and, and let people come in and you pray for them. God may say, start a noontime prayer. God may say, teach people how to praise and worship. God may say, just go online and pray for the hurting. Have the hurting contact you. Well, God may say, just go out and, and share the word of God, encourage people wherever they are. And God will say, don't look for money and don't look for numbers of people. Just be obedient. And when you obey God, whatever he puts on your heart, the Holy Spirit will take it and run with it and will prosper it to the glory and honor of God. So what I'm seeing, ladies and gentlemen, is God raising up a new church. Church number one needs help. Church number two, there are so many people, They all they want to do is just be in the building and, and, and they're not challenged. They don't study. They don't pray. They don't, uh, they don't believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They, many reject the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Church number two is, is, is hopeless, ladies and gentlemen, unless they repent and receive what God has for them. And so we're not trying to change anybody. We're not trying to disrupt anything. We just want to be faithful to God and let the word of God go. And let and, and as people hear the word and receive, their lives will change. God may use David Carter to start a, a, a ministry in Dubai or to start a Bible study. We don't know. It's between God and David. And when David hears from the Lord and, and his work, wife, his precious wife works with him, and, and the Holy Spirit will give the increase. So we just want to encourage you, whatever God is leading you to do, we want to stand with you and let you know it can be done. And don't worry about critics. Don't worry about people who don't uh, agree with you. And, and most of the time, you're going to get people in your own family who won't agree with you. But you just go with what God gives you. Walk in love. Don't strive with anybody. And don't try to prove yourself to anybody because we've got some vicious people out there in church number two. Uh, they will cut you down. They will cut you to the quick. They will denounce you. They'll go on CNN and talk about you. They'll talk about you on Facebook. They'll, hit you, they'll talk about you on Instagram but with their photos. But don't worry about it. God will cover you. When you do what the Lord says do, he will cover you. So praise God. Let's look today briefly. As we continue our series, and I've been preaching for the last four weeks, if you want to get the videos of these messages, send me an email or else go to uh, YouTube.com. Uh, you Go to my YouTube channel, and it's under Leroy Carter. The YouTube channel is Leroy Carter. You can see all of our archives, archive videos 
uh, even the teachings from our Paul Bakley School of Prophecy. Praise God, that great school that's changing lives. And uh, you can get these messages. We try to keep our services under 45 minutes. Praise God. Praise God. And we thank God. We thank God. We don't ask for money. We don't put the bag on you. We just pronounce the word of God and, and believe that you're going to hear and receive. And we believe the Lord to bless you and, and keep you. We say, well, how do you operate? We operate because God has kind people who send us gifts and well, we just praise God. And then Jackie and I, my precious wife and I, we take from our Social Security money and our retirement fund. And we just, hey, we just pay for what needs to be paid for because uh, freely we receive and freely we give. I, it grieves me to see preachers on on the uh, a TV and the radio and the Internet begging for money. And it's everything's got to be money, 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 money. Yes, we need money, but I ain't going to beg anybody for anything. I trust God. God has brought me from a long way, ladies and gentlemen, and he's providing every need. And we pray that as you launch out in whatever ministry God has for you, you just trust the Lord. Trust God. God will put the right people in your path. He will send people to assist you. He will supply your every need. Only believe, ladies and gentlemen. So let's look at the scriptures. Let's look at the scriptures. And um, in your reading, in your reading this week, read Matthew 3, 13 to 17. Start there. Matthew 3, 13 to 17. And that's when John the Baptist was baptizing in the Jordan and he saw Jesus coming into the Jordan. Jesus walked up to him and said, baptize me. John said, no, you ought to be baptizing me. Jesus says, suffer that to be, baptize me. And John baptized Jesus in the water. And when Jesus came up out of the water, according to the scriptures, the Holy Ghost came out of heaven in the form of a dove and lit on Jesus' shoulder. And a, a voice from heaven, which was God the Father, said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Ladies and gentlemen, we see that Jesus, who knew no sin, was baptized uh, for the sins of all people. He identified with sinful mankind. And even though he was without sin, he allowed John to baptize him for the remission of sins. What a mighty God we serve. And then uh, John even said, uh, I'm going to baptize him with water, but he will baptize you with the fire. And this is what our series is all about, ladies and gentlemen, being baptized with the fire. Ladies and gentlemen, God wants to, to baptize you with the fire. Jesus told his disciples, he told them um, to uh, wait for the promise. He said, wait for the promise. And he said in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, go into all the world preaching the gospel. And then he said, wait for the promise. Don't go until you get the promise. Acts 1, 4 and 5. Put that on your reading list. Acts chapter 1, verses 4 to 5. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Matthew 28, 18 to 20, which is called the Great Commission. And then add to your list Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4. These uh, scriptures are all about the promise Jesus made. He told his disciples, wait in Jerusalem for the promise. He said, I'm sending you into all the world. He was not just speaking to the, the 11 disciples then, of uh, the 12 with, with Matthias added. He was not just speaking to them, but he's speaking to us, ladies and gentlemen. He's speaking to you and me. He's speaking to, to all of the body of Christ, those who've been blood washed. He wants us to share the good news. If you've been saved, you ought to share that message with someone else. You ought to tell someone else that they don't have to live in sin, that they don't have to remain sick, that they don't have to be beaten and cast down, but that there is good news. And the good news is that Jesus Christ died, was buried, rose again from the dead, and he's a healer. He's a deliverer. He will save you. He will give you a new life. We've got to share this with others, ladies and gentlemen. 
And this is what church number one is doing. We're sharing this message with others. Ladies and gentlemen, people are going to hate you. They're going to hate on you. They don't. Many won't want you to come around. They won't invite you to their dinners or celebrations. But you keep trusting in the Lord. Jesus said, if anyone will come after me, he must suffer persecution. So don't worry when men revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you. Uh, uh, falsely. Uh, Jesus said, so they did to the prophets. They stoned the prophets. They killed the prophets. So don't worry when people hate you, when your family uh, hates you, when your friends hate you. You just keep loving the Lord and love the people. Ladies and gentlemen, the very people who throw stones at you, who want to uh, burn your house down, who want to shoot you, who want to fire your house up with machine gun bullets, uh, uh, you've got to love them and be forgiving. You've got to love them. No matter what they do to us, we've got to walk in love, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to forgive them. Even when they hurt us, even when they hurt us real bad, and some of us have been hurt real bad. Some of us have been deceived. Some of, some of us have been messed over, and we've been messed over by so-called church folks, so-called Christians. We've got to forgive them and not let any root of bitterness be in us. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've got any root of bitterness in you towards anyone, you've got to repent. You've got, before we go any further, you've got to repent. Forgive those who hurt you. Release them. Don't try to get back. Don't try to get payback. No, no, no. Don't try to pay them back. Just forgive them and release them. When you forgive them and release them, God will release his spirit upon you in ways that you cannot imagine. And so I want you to visualize, ladies and gentlemen, as we talk about in this series, why every believer ought to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And there are so many scriptures God has given us. Visualize Ezekiel 37, that valley of dry bones. Put yourself in the valley of dry bones. Do that now. Imagine you're in that valley of dry bones that Ezekiel is allowed to see in the spirit. And I want you to go a little bit further, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to imagine you are one of those dry bones. Ladies and gentlemen, oftentimes when I preach, I tell people, when you study the scripture, get on the page. Get on the page with the character. I want you to get on the page with Ezekiel in chapter 37 and imagine you are one of those dry bones. And I can prove that you are one of them and I am one of them. And the scripture tells us after Ezekiel saw that vision, God said, son of man, can these bones live? Can these dry bones live? And Ezekiel said, you know that, Lord, you know they can. And God said to Ezekiel, son of man, prophesy to these bones. Preach to these dead, dry bones. They're just laying there. They don't have any life in them. They're disconnected. The toe bone's not connected with the foot bone. And the foot bone's not connected with the ankle bone. And the ankle bone is not connected with the leg bone. And the leg bone's not connected with the knee bone. And the knee bone's not connected with the thigh bone. And the thigh bone's not connected with the hip bone. And the hip bone's not connected with the backbone. And the backbone's not connected with the, the neck bone, the neck bone with the skull. They're just bones and they're out of place and they're dysfunctional. They're just taking up space. There's no life in them. And God, see, God has a vision, ladies and gentlemen. God has a vision. When he calls you, he gives you a vision. He's got plans. He may not, may not show you all of his plans, but he says in his words, I know the plans I have for you. God did not send David Carter to Dubai for nothing. God's got a plan, David, and God's got a bigger plan. And as you trust him and, and obey him, God's going to reveal that plan. But don't let your heart be hardened because some of your friends in America don't call you, don't send you letters. Seems like they've forgotten you. Don't you get weary in well-doing, David, and don't get angry with them. You know how fickle people are. They, they're, they're your friend when you're there, uh, but when you're, when you're somewhere else, they forget about you. But God has not forgotten you, David Carter. God has not forgotten your wife and your daughter. 
God's there with you. God's not forgotten you, Christy Carpenter. God's not forgotten you, Ryan Trogler. God's not forgotten you, uh, uh, Sylvia Curtis. God's not forgotten you, Tammy Nichols. God's not forgotten you, Wes. God knows. He knows the plans he has for you. And so, ladies and gentlemen, here's what happens. Here is what is happening. As you visualize yourself as being one of those dry bones, you are seeing what is happening in the church, ladies and gentlemen. I read you a description of church number one and church number two. Church number one is vibrant. They trust the Lord. They believe in the Holy Ghost. They seek the Holy Ghost. They seek to get filled over and over again with the Holy Ghost. They, Even though they're small in number, they believe that we can take the whole world for Jesus. I believe we can take the whole world world for Jesus. I believe that if we do what God says do without any bitterness in our heart, with not any anger in our spirit, with not uh, uh, with not any lust in our heart, with, without sin in our lives, I believe that as we believe God, God will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we're able to ask or think, ladies and gentlemen. But then we've got a whole lot of people in this nation and other nations who call themselves Christians, ladies and gentlemen, and are nominal Christians. They go to church every Sunday. They carry their Bibles, got big crosses around their necks. They take notes. And after church is over, they go back to the same old, same old. Pop that 40, drink that uh, bourbon, uh, smoke that dope, run with one another's uh, husbands and wives, men um, running with men and women with women, they go back and then next Sunday they go back to church and, and, and just being in church, they believe that being in church is like Alka-Seltzer, plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. They want to get that bad boy off their back. So they go to church and they go through the religious motions. Most so-called Christians in this nation are living that way. They reject when you preach to them about being filled with the Holy Ghost, it's in the Bible, but they reject that part of the Bible. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear anything about love thy neighbor as thyself. Many are racist, ladies and gentlemen. They hate one another. Some blacks hate whites. Whites hate blacks, but they call themselves Christians. You can't be a Christian and be a racist at the same time. It's diametrically opposed. God is not a hypocrite. God is not a schizophrenic. God is not double-minded. God said, love thy neighbor as thyself. And you're hating on somebody because their skin is black or you're hating on somebody because their uh, skin is white. You can be the bishop. You can be the pope. But if you've got hate in your heart and won't repent, you're going to bust hell wide open. You need to repent right now. I'm talking to a lot of racists who, are, who will watch these videos Amen. If you hate anybody because their skin is different, you are a racist and you need to repent. If I re if I regard iniquity in my heart, God won't even hear me. I cannot hate anyone. I cannot hate. Even if you do me wrong, I've got to forgive you and repent if I have ill feelings towards you. That's the way of Christ. The Bible says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ. So we see in the Valley of Dry Bones, we see all these bones, millions of them scattered, bone parts, but not connected, not connected. God visualizes that they will be bodies. And in order for them to become bodies, God told Ezekiel, prophesy, preach to the bones. Now, what if God gave you a ministry and told you to go to the graveyard, the cemetery, and preach to the bones? They would lock you up. I know they'd lock you up. They'd lock me up. But do what God says do. He said, prophesy to these bones. And, and he preached to the bones, and the bones started moving. Ezekiel said, uh, I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a, there was a noise, and, a, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. But God was not finished because even in the church, we've got people, I mean, they go to church, but many don't even listen to God. They're playing with their little video uh, uh, gadgets. They're on their cell phone. They're taking selfies and want people to know they're in church and 
tweeting people and, and sending text messages. They don't even hear what the preacher is saying. And the preacher might not even be preaching holiness or the gospel. Ladies and gentlemen, that's church number two. That's the majority of churchgoers in this nation and the nation, nations. But God said to Ezekiel, prophesy. And then when the deal was over, God put bone to bone and put muscles on the bones and put flesh on the bones and put skin on the bones and then told Ezekiel to prophesy to the four winds that they blow the breath of God into those bodies. Those bones stood up as bodies, ladies and gentlemen, and the breath of God was breathed on them and those bones lived and God raised up a great and mighty army. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what the situation is in the world today. We have a lot of people. They love the Lord. They got saved. They confess Jesus. And they're going to churches. And many are in dead churches. They just sit there. They put in time. They go through religious motions. And, 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 and uh, the next six days, they do whatever they want to do, think whatever they want to think. The next Sunday, they're back in church. And they think that is being a Christian. Ladies and gentlemen, they're like the dry bones. God told Ezekiel, Ezekiel, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. This is Israel. And ladies and gentlemen, God is saying these bones are the church in America, the church in Russia, the church in China, the churches in Africa, the churches in Europe. They're all doing their own independent little things. They will not connect. They are scattered. They will not connect with one another. Many do not get along with one another. They don't love one another. They won't forgive one another. They're competing with one another. And we call ourselves the church, ladies and gentlemen. Get a copy of my book, A New Paradigm for the Church. I'll send it to you free. Send me your address, David. I'll send you one. Send me a mailing address. Praise God. So that you can read this and be edified. And that you can help glorify God. And so Ezekiel preached and the Holy Spirit came upon those bones. And those bones connected. And God put muscles on the bones. And flesh. And put skin on the bones. And they stood up. Bodies were made intact. And then God said, preach, prophesy upon to the four winds to breathe the breath of God into these bodies. And God's breath, the Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen, the baptism of the Holy Ghost came upon the bones in the valley. And that valley of dry bones represented Israel represented the church today, represented you and me. That is why the Bible says, do not be drunk with wine and which is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, there are so many people still fighting against the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They're trying to do things their own way. They're dry bones. You're dry if you don't have the Holy Ghost. No matter what God has told you to do, if you don't ask the Holy Spirit to come and help you and guide you, you will not be successful. You cannot have a successful ministry without the Holy Spirit. You say, well, Pastor Card, you're preaching to the choir. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, get filled again. Ladies and gentlemen, every day the Lord blesses me to wake up. I ask him to fill me again with the Holy Spirit. Well, Pastor Carter, why do you have to ask God so much to be refilled? Because I'm looking at the life of Jesus. I've got my eyes on Jesus. Jesus, after he ministered, he would go up into the mountains and pray. He would uh, get on a boat and pray. He would take a walk and pray because he even said when the woman, when the woman with the issue of blood touched him out of the whole crowd, he walked among a whole crowd, but one person touched him and drained him of his virtue and power. And that was the woman of faith who believed that if she just reached out and touched him, Sylvia Curtis, I hope you're listening right now. She just said, if I just touched but the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. 
and she was healed. And the moment she was healed, Jesus felt virtue leave his body. And so as Jesus ministered, as he ministered to the crowds, he was drained at the end of each teaching session, every ministry session, and he needed to be filled again with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, look at the example of Jesus. Look at Jesus. And if Jesus needed the Holy Ghost, he needed to be filled again and again. Then you and I need to be filled again and again. Let's not be ignorant, ladies and gentlemen. Seek the Holy Spirit. He's here to help us. God sent him here to come alongside us, to help us. The Bible says be filled. And when you look at that verb tense, the language, uh, be filled, it means it's in the aorist tense, A-O-R-I-S-T, aorist tense. It's a Greek tense, and we don't have it in the English language. And the aorist tense means continue to be filled. When Jesus says be filled with the Holy Ghost, when Paul writes that, it means continue to be filled. Continue to be filled. My cup overrunneth. When your cup is low, get filled again. Pour some more coffee in your cup. Just like Paul Begley, when he lifts his cup and he drinks some, Heidi's going to pour some more coffee in his cup. Be continuously filled with the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, when the church grabs this and honors God and honors the Holy Spirit and stop fighting the power of the Holy Ghost and the person and the reality of the Holy Spirit and realize that we cannot be successful by ourselves, no matter who we are, no matter how much money we've got, no matter, no matter what degrees we've got, no matter what people think about us, we cannot do anything without the Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen. When the, church, when the church opens their hearts and receives us, and when we repent, when we repent for all the negative things we've said about the Holy Spirit, when we repent, from grieving him and then humble ourselves, glory to God, when we humble ourselves and say, Holy Spirit, fill me, fill me, fill me with your presence. I want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And if you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost, get baptized again. Some of you may be sick in body today. Some of you may be confused. Some of you may have been hurt. Some of you are being threatened with foreclosure. Some of you may have lost your job, may have lost loved ones. Some of you may feel all alone, but you're not all, all alone. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Ask the Holy Ghost to fill you and receive him by faith. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. If you're sick, ask the Holy Spirit to heal you. And don't look at the symptoms. Don't look at how you feel. When you ask for healing, receive it by faith and let the Holy Ghost do his work. He knows when to show up. He knows how to show up. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, he will not fail you. He, he won't fail you. I remember we used to sing this song years ago. He's never failed me yet. He's never failed me yet. Jesus Christ never failed me yet. And everywhere I go, I want the world to know Jesus Christ never failed me yet. He's never Man. failed me yet. He's never failed me yet. Jesus Christ never failed me yet. And everywhere I go, I want the world to know Jesus Christ never failed me yet. Then you put your hands together, start clapping, get on the good foot, get the shout and get the praise of God. He never failed me. You close your eyes, lift your hand. He never failed me yet. Jesus Christ never failed. Your family might think you're crazy, but that's on them. Hallelujah. And everywhere I go, I want the world to know Jesus Christ never failed me yet. And watch while that healing comes. Watch and receive by faith as the Holy Spirit releases that healing into your body, brings that peace into your mind. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Ladies and gentlemen, it begins with us looking at the valley of dry bones and saying, you know what? I'm not filled with the Holy Ghost. That's me. I'm, I'm just a dry bone. I'm tired of going to church. I'm tired of going to church aching and sick and 
and irritable and I'm tired of leaving church aching and sick and irritable. I'm tired of my pastor teaching the same old dry negative messages. I'm tired of people talking about black folks and tired of black folks talking about white folks. I'm tired of the politics. I'm tired of people talking about President Trump. You need to pray for President Trump. You need to embrace him and hold him up before the Lord. He's the Lord's anointed for this time. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of all the negative. Uh, I'm tired of seeing the politics in the church. I'm tired of uh, seeing the same old leaders doing the same old thing. I'm tired of the begging for money. And I'm even tired of the people in the parking lot who are watching over my car. Ladies and gentlemen, what kind of church is that? But yet people go Sunday after Sunday, same old attitude, leave with the same old attitude. Nothing changes. And yet, and yet, yet they resist the scriptures. When the scripture says, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Jesus gave us a command, ladies and gentlemen. He said, tarry in Jerusalem until the promise comes. He said, yes, I want you to go into all the world. I want you to go to Dubai. I want you to go to Syria. I want you to go to Afghanistan. I want you to go to India. I want you to go, but wait on the power. Let me fill you with power. And when you receive the power, then I will lead you. I will use your voice to preach. I will use your hands to lay upon the sick. I will use your voice to cast out demons. I will use your voice to bring dry bones together. But wait for the power. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said last Sunday, I'll never forget the Sunday I received the Holy Ghost baptism. I was dry. I was tired of playing church. I was tired of going to church, hearing people talk about Jesus, not living for Jesus. I was tired of seeing a preacher preach one thing and doing another thing. I was a seminary student. I was tired of my seminary students. They didn't know Jesus, but yet they were getting A's on their papers. It was just, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And the Lord said, I don't want you going to this church today. I want you to go to this church. He told me, go to Rehoboth Full Gospel, where your friend, your classmate, Pastor Howard DeBro is the pastor. You go there and tell Pastor Howard, you're here to receive something. You tell him, I don't know what I'm to get, but I'm here to receive something. And God said, you go expecting. Ladies and gentlemen, when they laid hands on me, hallelujah, in that service, Woo! The power of God fell upon me. I got filled with the Holy Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, it was so awesome. Hallelujah. I began praising God and dancing in the spirit. And then they tell me that for the next 45 minutes, the whole church went off. People began getting filled with the Holy Ghost. People began praising God. People got healed. Ladies and gentlemen, hallelujah. We just praise God. Hallelujah. And I have never been the same since. I've been drained. I've been drained of power, but I've been filled again and again and again and again and again. And every day I ask God, fill me with the Holy Spirit because I know that I know that I know. Tammy, I can do nothing on my own. Jesus even said to his disciples, I cannot do nothing. I cannot do anything of myself. I do what I see my father do. I do what I hear him say. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to partner with the Holy Spirit. Open up your heart. Confess your sins. Ask the Holy Spirit to come in. Even if you've been filled before, some of you need a new filling. You need a second touch. I need a touch from you. I need a touch from you. We're singing to the Holy Ghost. I need a touch from you. If you need a touch from the Holy Spirit today, right now, just right where you are, lift up your hands. I need a touch from you. And ask the Holy Spirit, fill me today. Fill me right now. Fill me. Don't worry about that sickness in your body. Don't worry about that problem you have. Don't worry about that money you need. 
get filled. I need a touch from you. Fill us, Holy Spirit. Fill us, Holy Spirit. Fill us, Holy Spirit. We receive you in the name. Glory to God. Some of you may speak in tongues or may not speak in tongues, but some will get the gift of tongues. Hallelujah. It's a prayer language where you praise God in your own language. God will give you the interpretation. If you hear that voice in you, that's new language. Begin praying that out loud to God right now. You can mute your phones, but pray out loud to God. Glory to God. Praise God. That's a witness. That's a witness. But that's not the only witness when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. You see, everybody does not speak in tongues. But some uh, receive the gift of prophecy. Some receive the gift of healing. Some receive healing. Some receive the gift of administration. Read 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, and you'll read about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. Read about what God will give you along with the Holy Spirit. Some will speak in tongues, but all do not speak in tongues. Some will prophesy, but all will not prophesy. Some will speak a word and 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 demons flee from people. Some will speak a word and people in your household will be healed. Some will speak a word and your neighbor will get a job. Ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit is here to help us. He's our partner. He's the one who comes alongside. He's the one Jesus promised. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to be going to church and gagging and dying and being frustrated and being without power. You can connect with God like those bones in the valley of Ezekiel. They connected. They connected. The Holy Spirit connected them and filled them with new life. God wants to connect the church. God wants to connect First Baptist with Second Pentecostal, Third Lutheran with First Episcopalian. God wants to tear down these uh, denominational walls so that all of us who call ourselves Christians are being led by the Holy Spirit and we're worshipers of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. If you're listening today, you're watching the video, listening to the tape, and you want to be saved, Ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your life. Receive him by faith and thank him. Tell him you believe he's the son of God. He died on the cross. He rose again from the dead. Ask him to come and live in you and ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit. I say to you, my friends, in the name of Jesus, as I lay hands on these monitors, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled in Dubai. Be filled in America. Be filled in Kenya. Be filled in Tanzania. Be filled in Uganda. Be filled in Guyana. Be filled in Brazil. Be filled in France. Be filled in Syria. Be filled in Israel. Be filled in Korea and China. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father. And we receive by faith in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Well, Facebook family, we're going to uh, uh, stop the, the uh, telecast at this time. But if you want to talk with me about this message or you have any questions, please, you can uh, send me a text message or you can uh, hit me up on my Facebook page. I have two Facebook pages. One is Leroy Carter. The other is Back to Basics Ministries Incorporated. Back to Basics Ministries Incorporated. You contact me. Don't forget, contact me for a copy of a, a new paradigm for the church. I'll send it to you for free. Praise God. It will bless you. Praise God. So we got, we're going to sign out uh, Facebook, but you can call me. You can also call me at 770-559-9710. Praise God. Praise God. Everyone else, we invite you to stay on. We're going to end 